is Reed Stow from Rex Game Studios. I'm going to talk to you about StormQuest Game, Episode 4, General Status Report of the Game and its Development Process right now. Let me talk a little bit about where things are at. We've been really in active development since summer of 2019. I know we've been talking about this game for quite a while, and we've shown some concept designs and things of that earlier on in the development of the game, but really the active development has started this last summer. And the focus of our development has been mainly on the core of the game engine itself. Instead of focusing on like eye candy, what things we might think look like on the outside, we're now focusing on the back end, more of the coding aspect of the game itself. Just kind of an overview of what we are working on in case you haven't looked at any of the other videos. The first thing we're working on is our concepts or what we would call proof of concepts. And the first proof of concept is what we call Project Dome. It's more of a real time strategy game where you act as the forecaster, the emergency manager, the warning coordinator. You have a top down view. You're placing buildings, you're placing vehicles, you're tracking storms and issuing warnings. Your goal is to coordinate with your team to track storms and forecast for storms issue warnings for people so that you can save their lives and then collect weather data so that you can get more grant money and more funds so that you can expand your your uh, forecasting abilities proof of concept is what we call project wikita and we've shown some screenshots and some ideas that we've had in the past but really this is uh, something that's going to come a little bit later because our focus here is more of a first person player uh, realm and there you play as the storm chaser itself or a storm observer on a very detailed map of the state of Oklahoma. And your goal is there, of course, to track and chase storms, uh, to give that information back to your warning coordinator so that warnings are issued accurately, as well as collect weather data for research for future funds. The ultimate goal, though, of all of this is to bring both those concepts into one game. Now, they might be both separate games, but they would work together to coordinate so that one would act as a warning coordinator, others would act as storm chasers as one team, and then you would play against other players out in the game itself. There could be also a single player comp component of this game, of either one of those games, so that you can play by yourself so you don't have to necessarily play against other players and so forth. So let me talk a little bit about what our focus has been over the last, since really summer of 2019. We've been focusing uh, and, and the, on the game engine itself, which will work both with Project Dome and with Kita. We've been working on the camera system, which really relates to the views that you'll see within the game and how the camera moves throughout the game. The AI traffic system, how vehicles interact with each other and so forth and other parameters. The weather itself, both the synoptic and mesoscale features and parameters, the storm interactions and development, so how the storms will grow and interact with the synoptic and mesoscale features, objects such as building placement, how they upgrade, how they change over time, how they are damaged by storms themselves. The mapping system, what the actual game area looks like. The warning system, which is related to how warnings and alerts and watches and forecasts are issues, issued throughout the game. A messaging system, which is related to how both real and virtual players will interact with you in the game. Specifically in like Pro Project Dome, where your virtual storm chasers and virtual uh, local uh, law enforcement and public and news officials will give you information so you can make better warnings and watches. The storage, how we store data both on our servers and local, locally on the person's uh, system. Scoring, how you score success and failures and within the game. The tech tree, how you advance in technology and how you gained more access to other products that help improve your forecast accuracy. The general UI or the user experience, how you transition from one section of the game to the other, what you use to look at things, how you upgrade products and things of that nature. The multiplayer experience, so how do you uh, react with other players within the game in real time. And of course, there's, there's much more than just this, but these are kind of the core areas that we're focused on right now. Now, here are some areas that we've actually completed, and 
The first area that we've completed is the camera system. We've got two different kinds of camera views. One is the RTS view, which is more of a traditional looking down at maybe a, a 60 degree angle at the surface of a map or terrain. And the other is the first person view when you're inside of a vehicle and you can look right and left and up and down and all around. So both of those are actually gonna be in included in Project Dome. It's just that the first person player view in Project Dome will not be as detailed as it will be in the uh, Project Wakita aspect of things. The second area, which was a really big hurdle for us, is the AI traffic system. And originally we were thinking about pulling in a third person party add-on to the game, but we felt like this was not the best way to go because if, as we advanced, we wanted to be able to expand upon this and grow it as we moved forward. So we actually built our own system. So we built our own traffic light system that will change from red to green and yellow and so forth. And then that traffic system will interact with the actual AI traffic itself. The AI traffic will be able to read the traffic lights and be able to interact and move accordingly like in a real scenario. The other area was really from these areas down, how AI traffic interacts with other traffic and emergency traffic and the road conditions was quite challenging because first of all, when, it, when the AI traffic spawns onto the map, it's not all gonna be the same. Vehicles are gonna travel at different speed. They're gonna travel at different directions. They're gonna turn left, they're gonna turn right. They're gonna go north, they're gonna go south. They're gonna go east and west. That all had to be randomized and, and patterned properly. So when a car that's driving faster approaches a slower car, it needs to know to slow down. Or if a car's vehicle stopped, it needs to stop. Um, so it needs to be able to judge those distances and so forth. The other element that was really challenging was adding in emergency vehicles. So when an emergency vehicle now takes priority, uh, it, the other AI traffic needs to know that emergency vehicle is approaching and get out of the way so that it can pass by and then get back onto the streets. So again, that's an area that we've been able to complete. The final area of this was having the traffic interact with the road conditions. So we actually had to build within the, ro the road itself uh, points within the road that would tell the traffic, okay, this road is dry or it's moist or it's wet or flooded or icy or snowy. So either one of those would have an effect on how the traffic would go. So if the road ended up being more wet, then the traffic would automatically slow down to a certain speed at that point. And obviously all the other traffic. This all will be expanding even further as we continue to grow the system. But the core of this AI traffic is now being completed at this point. The current area we're working on right now is the weather generation itself. And really we're looking at what we're talking about is the synoptic and mesoscale features that eventually will uh, have an impact on how storms generate over the actual map itself. So when we're talking about that, we're talking about the general weather setup, like what kind of risk level from general thunderstorms all the way up to high level. And actually we, we included what we call an extreme level. And that's kind of like a generational type scenario, like uh, the year of uh, April 27th, 2011, or April 3rd, uh, 1973 and so forth. Uh, excuse me, April 3rd, 1974. The probabilities, then we move to the next level, which is the probability. So we took the data that SPC, the Severe Prediction Center, uh, Storm Prediction Center put together, and we built that into the system. So we have a range of determinate factors that go into place. So if it's like a moderate risk, then we have uh, parameters that are built uh, for both tornado, for both tornado, wind, and hail damage uh, to build percentages of what storms may have based upon those conditions. And then moving from there, we also build what we call the, the key weather parameters or ingredients. So now that we have the high level, we move from high level to low level. So if it's gonna be like, you know, if, if the system tells us internally that it's gonna be a moderate risk for that day, then the parameters are gonna be building around that particular situation. However, you can still have busts. You can have situations that will completely bust. Like you may have a cap that stays in place and no storms form, or you may have a scenario where there's just so much precip that it just cuts out you know any kind of surface-based supercells that might develop in the area and then the last component of that is the time system is looking at the 24-hour clock and how and when the severe weather will develop how long it will last and as well as um, uh, 
how the day and night cycles will have an impact and the seasons of the year will have an impact on the on the severity of the weather. So right now what we've completed so far in this area is we've completed the general weather setup and this is stuff that you will not see in the game. In other words, it's all in the back end. It's all telling the engine how to work. You as the forecaster will have to determine what the conditions will be based upon how you place vehicles, how you place buildings, how you place radar systems, and you have to determine, you know, weather balloons that go up in the atmosphere, you will have to make those forecasts based upon the parameters. But all this other stuff is happening in the background and will be hidden. So you won't know that until you actually get that information yourself and make a wise uh, forecast of what's going to happen. And then we've also been able to complete the weather severity parameters, so or the probabilities. So, what, for example, if there's a moderate risk and there's a 25% chance for uh, tornadoes within that region, what will happen is is the system will go through 25 times, cycle through 25 times, and based upon how many times it hits 100%, will determine how a storm will interact or, or produce at that time, whether it will be a severe a storm that will actually produce a tornado or not on that on that rating system the la the area that we're currently working on is on the uh, what we kind of call it the grid system but it's not really a grid system and what it is is it, it it creates the ingredients based upon the levels above it and obviously you know when a uh, low pressure system or a cold front or draw line are moving through uh, so now we're kind of identifying those mesoscale features those synoptic scale features and putting them together and uh, creating this grid so that we can now say, well, if you know, on the map, if your weather service office is at the northwest corner of the map, but the severe weather is going to be happening towards the southeast corner, if you click on the building and you look at the weather conditions, you're going to see a drastic difference in weather conditions than you would where the potential severe weather would be. So that that's kind of what we're working on now at this point within the game. So our next episode we're going to do is targeted for Feb uh, for Friday, May 1st. We're going to be talking a little bit about our new website that we're working on. So hopefully we'll have it close to being done by then, uh, or at least in development at that point. We'll also talk a little bit about where our, we're at on the weather status, that the area of weather generation that we were just talking about. And we'll also talk about where we're going next. And if you have any questions, we'd love for you to join us on our Discord channel. There's a link there so you can see how you can interact with us, ask questions about what's going on with the game, talk about the latest severe weather events that are upcoming or currently happening. Uh, we would love to talk to you and so forth. We want to thank you for joining us, and we hope you have a great and a safe weekend.